five uh, talks. So uh, if you have questions, jot them down and try to fit some of them in, in the end in the panel. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit uh, about why I think that AGI requires integrated models of cognition, uh, why graphical architectures are uh, a good idea, and about the Microsoft framework uh, itself. Uh, I'm not going to talk uh, about this a lot because we are very short on time. And uh, one of the uh, reviewers asked me in his review why I would think that a graphical architecture would be a good question in the first place. And I think this is one of the points that you should briefly maybe elucidate. Uh, I believe um, that one thing that you should be thinking about briefly is what's actually consisting um, the, the biggest problem of AI, AGI research. Is it that we do not have a proper roadmap, that we lack tools for evaluation? Do we need to understand things like creativity better? Do we need to focus on empathy and communication? Is the biggest question of AGI research maybe the existential risk that comes with it? Or is it a question of getting sufficient hardware, more parallel hardware, faster hardware, better uh, CPUs, cheaper hardware? Or is it uh, the big topic of funding, how can we get our research funded and so on? And uh, I don't doubt that all of these questions are extremely important and uh, interesting questions, except maybe for the funding question. But uh, I believe that the really biggest question of all of them is that we don't know how to achieve AGI at all yet. And uh, I don't mean in the sense that we don't uh, know how to uh, achieve, say, mortality or uh, that we uh, don't know how to achieve uh, turning into godlike beings or whatever, but in a very uh, mundane, se uh, secular sense. Um, more like that we didn't know how we can achieve sorting a few hundred years ago. I do think that's entirely doable uh, as a computer scientist, and I don't think that it can be difficult because nature gets it right so many times by just kicking a lot of goo in the right place in our head and making it or constraining it sufficiently to perform all these cognitive operations that we also uh, cherish. But uh, we, d we just don't know how to do it. We know how to do sorting, we can program this, but we don't know how to do AGI because as programmers, if you know how to do something, that means we have expressed it as a program. And um, so the big question is uh, how do we find out? And we already have good ideas in which corners to look, uh, but still um, we are far from knowing how to do it. And I don't think that the problem of AGI is to get a single paradigm perfect, like deep learning, make deep learning better, or uh, optimality theory, or uh, better logic-based systems, or uh, solve the riddle of language, or whatever. But instead, I think that we need to make progress in many areas. And this needs, needs to lead to good enough solutions. And these good enough solutions need to cover things like autonomous decision making and reflection and adaptation and the acquisition and the control of internal complexity so how can we build a system that makes itself more complicated but makes sure that this complexity is also regulated uh, how can we get perceptual processing in such a system uh, how can we achieve the basic cognitive operations and enable language and logic and so on to them how can we get such a system to interact successfully with an environment and with other agents and so on? Uh, then questions like resource management, attentional processing, any time characteristics and so on. How can we work with limited resources? <coughs> and I don't think that there is a single paradigm that can address these things, like building robots or focusing or embodiment. It would probably not be the right level to uh, solve this host of problems or looking at neurons and brain architecture might not be the right level either. Um, but I think that the biggest problems there lurk in the uncharted territories, those things that we do not understand very well. Personally, I totally agree with uh, Maggie's talk that motivation is a very important topic, that is attaching relevance to content. But I don't think that's a very difficult one. But this might be a self-deception because I've been working on motivation for the past 10 years or so and now I think that okay we can set up a, a system with a finite set of drives which also make the system autonomously explore social domains and cognitive domains. 
but uh, it is an important question, but it's uh, one I think that can be so uh, solved in a decade of research and so on. But the really tricky things are uh, maybe in the perceptual domain, how can we encode percepts properly and do perceptual learning bottom up, and on the other hand, do concept driven hypothesis formation top down. And you do this both with model and amodal representations. And how can we reconcile this with parallel and fuzzy processing domains? like the associative operations on memory and analogy uh, finding and pattern recognition and structured association building and so on. How can we reconcile localist uh, representations with these parallel and fuzzy processing domains? And uh, we also need these localist combinatorial processing operations to get to planning and language and uh, constructive thinking and so on. And the biggest deficits are not just in these different topics where we do lots of stuff, but in how to understand how these things are intertwined, how uh, they, we can get them to play together, and uh, how can they be combined to form all those abilities that we have. So as an attempt of getting there, uh, 2002, we started work on the Cognitive Architecture Microsite, which is based on work by psychologist Dietrich Dörner. Uh, Unfairly, you remark that uh, most AGI research doesn't use a decent theory for psychology, and uh, this might have to do with uh, the sparseness of decent theories in psychology, because uh, psycho uh, psychology, unfortunately, is not a theory-driven discipline, and you don't get any uh, points by, uh, for trying to publish a theory in psychology. This is not how psychology works, which is unfortunate. Which, because it means that we have to do it ourselves. We have to do this, maybe not in artificial intelligence, but in something broader and more cognitive science domains. Unfortunately, cognitive science over the past decade or so has turned into neuroscience, uh, which brings us to AGI. So I guess that our job as AGI scientists, in some sense, is to come up with a decent theory of what a mind is, that is, with a decent theory of psychology. And this uh, is baby steps towards such a theory. So it's an integrated architecture with round representations, and it has cognitive modulation. This modulation can configure the system in such a uh, way that emotional states emerge. And uh, it has a motivational system, which uh, gets the system to set its own goals autonomously, including social and cognitive goals. And the whole thing is uh, graph-based architecture. Uh, we are currently um, doing, since uh, for about a year now, a re-implementation of the system. When we started 10 years ago, software development was very different from what it is today. Back then it was all Java and XML. Today it's much more agile. We have the same functionality in a fraction of the uh, number of lines of code. It's much more easy to work with this. And our focus is on making this thing readable, understandable, and we are putting together an open source version which can, uh, people can access on GitHub, which uh, they can use with the browser without installing anything. So uh, it's fast. One of the main goals is how can we explore ideas? And the representations in there are built on graphs, strictly speaking on hypergraphs, and uh, they use spreading activation networks as the dominant principle for their computation. That's a paradigmatic uh, difference to other systems which use logic or rule-based systems or which uh, try to mirror biological neurons as closely as possible with spike cranks and so on, or a combination thereof. But it's not a computationally different thing. It's a different way uh, of taking perspective on what this thing does. And since our goal is uh, to get models uh, as researchers of how we can look at the mind, we find this a very fruitful perspective. So our agents are built on universal mental representations, which are compositional and distributed with the same formalism. There are a simple threshold element at the root of this, which are combined into spreading activation networks, and we can use them to express uh, plans and scripts and associative relationships and so on. The basic building block of this is what we call a concept node. A concept node has uh, a number, uh, a single slot and a number of gates, and these gates are tantamount to the link types. So we have a very small finite set of link types. And um, most of these links are causal um, in some sense. Uh, and um, taxonomic, and there is a, has a, uh, it is a, and the inverse relationship. 
And then we have a polynomial relationship. This is the has a in this part of relationship pair, which is in some more general sense uh, attribute uh, relationship. And uh, we have type activation of different kinds, which is uh, spread throughout the network. And together with sensors and actuators that do relate the system to operations on the environment and within itself, um, we can build more complex things and complex relationships. So the basic relationships are uh, partonomic um, and uh, categorial. We also have a simple relationship which is uh, useful for uh, connecting these things to databases and so on for programming purposes. And then we have a horizontal organizing relationship, which is a predecessor relationship and usually expresses causal linkages. These concept nodes are a special case of, uh, case of nodes. We have n slots and n gates. The gates have a gate function and several parameters. And in here, there is a node function. And in the simplest case, the node function does nothing but transmit activation from the slots, which are the activation things, to the gates. But they can do more complicated stuff. So we can hide arbitrary functionality in there and build arbitrarily complex agents with these node nets. And uh, all of our agents are built using these spreading activation networks with nodes. Activation spreading can be seen as a special case of message passing via matrix multiplication. And we uh, have constrained the activation spreading according to the links. So we don't have runaway activation. Usually these problems of early spreading activation networks uh, don't occur. Uh, we implement structural inheritance as co-activation of concepts. We have different speeds for activation propagation, so uh, this enables us to build simple hypergraph uh, capabilities in the systems, because uh, sometimes we need conditional linkage uh, in the graph. We will typically only have connections between nodes, which are independent of the connections that these nodes have to other nodes. But if you think about conceptual domains, very often you need conditional connections. That is, in the context of one concept, a concept has a different meaning than in the context of another one. So we need hypergraph properties. Okay, and we allow, this allows us to have a combination with neural learning and associative retrieval. Um, I'm not going to go into details just because we are out of time, basically, already. Um, the microsite framework builds all these agents out of these nodes and uh, can connect robotic domains into virtual environments. Usually we use virtual environments because uh, robots at this point provide very poor affordances. It's very difficult to build a robot that can climb a tree, uh, rip down a bit of wood, construct an X from it or whatever. And it's not that difficult to build equivalent operations in terms of discoverability and uh, combinatorial uh, richness in a virtual environment. Um, the framework is built on uh, a server application with uh, a runtime and the server allows us to distribute this over networks and people uh, can use it over the internet without having their own installations. We apply this to uh, research with psychologists which uh, use the model uh, for human problem solving and expressing personality properties as variations of the motivational system. And, um, also commercially, where we have MicroPsyche as the core of a platform for uh, acquiring social knowledge by uh, monitoring how people plan in this uh, social domain <coughs> and abstracting over these plans. This work is only possible because uh, of my co-workers, especially Dominic Verland, and uh, it's supported by the Hot Heaven uh, AG and the Berlin School of Mind and Brain. Uh, you can find some more information on microopsy.com, there is more to be uh, coming soon when we put the open source version of the current edition online. And uh, I'll be looking forward to questions uh, during the panel and later on. Thanks. <laughs>